So we're going to do another example of qualitative analysis just on a simply supported beam. But to make things interesting, we're going to use cantilever beam. But this time, instead of sim just simply supported, we're going to have part of the beam that is cantilevered. So it's hanging over the edge. And for the loading in this scenario, we're going to consider a uniformly distribu distributed load just on the cantilever part of the beam. So again, we're going to apply the same procedure to qualitatively calculate what we would expect our displacements to look like. So looking at this beam, we know for definite from the support conditions that we will have no deflection in the y direction at the left hand support and no deflection at the other support condition towards the right hand end. Also, as a result of the UDL on the cantilever portion of the beam, we would expect the tip of the cantilever to deflect downwards and from there we have three points of certainty. And what we can do is join these three points of certainty to get us a deflected shape of the beam. From this deflected shape, one of the things we can notice straight away is that we're getting tension all the way across the top face of this beam. Next, we're going to move on to the reactions. So we're going to draw the beam. And now we wish to know what directions the reactions are going in. And we're going to take moments about this reaction in the center. And if we have a UDL pointing downwards on the right hand side of the point we're taking moments, then it's going to want to move the beam upwards at the left hand edge. So if the beam wants to move upwards at the left hand edge, we can conclude from that that our reaction force must point downwards. And finally, we want to take moments from this left hand side of the beam. And if the UDL is wanting us to rotate in a clockwise manner, the only way that we can stop this rotation of the beam is if the support condition in the middle is pointing upwards. So now we have the directions of our reactions and our free body diagram for the beam. So we're going to proceed now finally to draw qualitatively what our bending moment diagram must look like. So in this case, we're going to use one of those known conditions that we know because of the UDL, we're going to get a quadratic variation of the bending moment. Also, we're going to use the knowledge that the tension is on the upper face of this beam. So we know that we're going to get a positive or a bending moment on the top side of the beam and we have a quadratic variation of this bending moment up until we reach the support. Between the two support conditions on the left hand side we have no applied loading and so we can simply deduce But the bending moment variation must vary linearly from this peak point in the middle down to a value of zero where we have a pin support at the left hand side. And that completes our bending moment diagram for this example.